Hello everybody, uh, now we will discuss the application of the non Fourier heat conduction model uh, for the different heat transfer problem. Uh, mostly we account this application of the either simply heating of the surface and we start with these things and then non Fourier heat conduction model can be used for the welding uh, of material. Maybe I will try to show the joining of the dissimilar materials in the, um, this process and even non Fourier heat conduction model how it is associated with the stress analysis that kind of analysis will show in this particular uh, module. So, let us start with so application of the ultrasound pulse laser of nanofilm. So, uh, simply heating of the nanofilm. So, we have already shown that how the finite element model can be done. Now, if we look into the different using that particular developed model, we can show the different results on this thing. And the main objective here we will try to identify how this thermal analysis or this results is different from the Fourier heat conduction model. So, we start with this thing gold metal film of uh, particular dimension the 5 micrometer by 10 micrometer by depth, depth is only 0.1 micrometer. So, that means 100 nanometer thickness gold film how it basically when it interact with the ultrasound pulse laser then how heat transfer phenomena can be explained these things. If we see in the particular situation this gold film the peak load is very high if you see 12660 that means I, I mean to say that if for 100 nanometer uh, thickness uh, layer it is subjected to that kind of the hue amount 2660 watt laser. But this laser this power uh, this energy that peak load is 2660 watt laser is actually apply with a very small duration of the time such that pulse energy can be very small in the microjoule it's, I think in this case. Uh, pulse energy is around I think 20 or 30 microjoule if we estimate we can estimate the uh, pulse energy also. So, that amount of the small energy is applied on the nano film then how it behaves or how it responds with respect to the ultrasound pulse laser. Assuming that there is no vaporization simply uh, the heat transfer is there because this ultrasound pulse laser is mostly used in case of the or ablation purpose but in this cases we are discussing the different from just simply heating the surface. Uh, without the ablation of the material. See uh, pulse duration is only 100 frame to second then pulse repetition is a very high pulse repetition rate 76 megahertz and the laser spot diameter on the surface it is uh, it is around 5 micrometer. So, in this situation we can see that if you do the simulation using that uh, non Fourier uh, dual phase lag model we can reach the temperature distribution can be like this. So, temperature if you see the temperature distribution is mostly confined on the surface. Uh, depth heat affected zone is maybe very small in the depth direction, but we will see if you look into uh, this simulation uh, also right hand side see that at the different time uh, the 100 frame per second, 200 frame per second, 300 frame per second how there is a progress of the heat affected zone specifically I am talking about the in the depth direction we can see. So, although the pulse duration is 100 frame per second it means that if we count the time from the 0 then within the 100 frame per second that duration pulse energy is supplied to the substrate material. But till that means at 200 frame per second there is no in this cases the in the that comes under the pulse off period that means no pulse energy is supplied to this particular material and on this film uh, at 200 frame per second or even 300 frame per second. But till we can see that even if we reach the 200 frame per second the depth of penetration that means depth direction or we can say the heat affected zone heat affected zone is increasing even it is 300 frame per second it is more although the application of the pulse energy stopped yeah, after 100 frame per second. It means that we are considering that the thermal relaxation that means some relaxation time is there. So, it must account that not exactly reaching to the peak temperature immediately after ending of the pulse energy supply, but till beyond that it takes some time to reach the equilibrium condition it means that it try to take some even after uh, off the pulse energy it takes some time to reach the equilibrium condition that means to reach the peak temperature and that peak temperature can reach beyond the 100 frame per second time. Therefore, we normally say that once the peak temperature even not exactly reaching exactly just end of the pulse duration rather much more time to reach this peak temperature. So, this can be explained by assuming that there is a thermal inertia effect and the thermal inertia effect is basically try to uh, act, act here in such a way that it takes some time uh, to reach the peak temperature. So, here you can see the peak temperature increases from 
uh, 860 Kelvin to 887 Kelvin in 100 nanosecond time. Now that means if you look into that things only that 860 Kelvin to 887 there is a not much temperature change but it happens only on within a 100 nanosecond time. It means that average rate of the increment is around 0 0.27 to 10 to the power 9 Kelvin per second. So in that scale this rate of temperature change is very high. So that means very rapid there is a change of the temperature. So that kind of information we can get from this uh, non fluid heat conduction model. We can see then of course one important part is that uh, if you understand that how the non fluid heat conduction model or temperature distribution is different from the Fourier heat conduction model we can look into this figure. So in this figure we have plotted the temperature distribution assuming that uh, different value of the relaxation time. So we have already defined there are two relaxation time one is the, uh, the relaxation time for the heat flux and the relaxation time for the temperature gradient. Now, for a first figure it shows that temperature gradient we have uh, uh, tt that means for the temperature gradient relaxation time is considered 0 0.1 picosecond and but relaxation time due to heat flux is changing from 0 0.1 to 50 picosecond within that range. Now if there is a changing of the relaxation time in that such duration we can see that how temperature distribution varies. So if for a fixed value of the relaxation time uh, for temperature gradient but relaxation time for the heat flux changes from 0.1 to 50 second then peak temperature changes so this value in gradually decreasing and if it is 50 picosecond then it is very low value the maximum temperature of the system can be very low and we can see this is obvious that, that the different we have seen the graph is showing that at the different values of the uh, relaxation of the heat flux. So uh, this we can see but uh, other point is that we are showing the at the which point at the what time stamp span it is it actually reaching the uh, peak temperature. In other sense we can say how much time is required to reach the equilibrium condition. Uh, that means so if it is uh, heat flux uh, that means tau 2 value is the very low 0 0.1 uh, near about this thing uh, 0 0.1 0 0.2 then after end of the pulse. So this first dotted line we can see the end of the pulse is the very small that 100 femtosecond. So then pulse energy supply it stopped after 100 femtosecond but till it is evolving it is trying to reach the equilibrium condition and it reach the peak temperature. So that gap is very small even tau, tau q means is that the mean uh, heat um, relaxation time for the heat flux is low. But once the relaxation time heat flux is very high for example it is 50 picosecond then it takes huge time to reach the, the peak temperature. So that kind of information is required. Now the same kind of the analysis if we compare with the Fourier heat conduction there is no question of the relaxation time. So in this case in Fourier heat conduction uh, model if we solve then uh, peak temperature will be reaching exactly after end of the pulse duration. So that means if we assume that Fourier heat conduction model is applied and even for the valid for the ultra soft pulse laser welding cases it should reach the peak temperature after 100 femtosecond. So that means just end of the pulse it should reach the peak temperature at this time duration just end of the pulse. But uh, in case of non fluid heat conduction we analyzing these things because of some thermal inertia effect it will not exactly reaching the or reaching to the maximum value of the peak temperature not exactly the end of the pulse. So that kind of the information we can get and that is the difference of the heat transparent analysis as compared to the uh, Fourier heat conduction model. The same thing we have analyzed the different way also that effect of the different relaxation time we can see that the temperature pattern are different maybe in this cases the tau t is varying 0 0.0.1 to 50 picosecond but heat flux uh, this thing tau q is the that means relaxation time due to the heat flux is very small 0 0.05 and when you can reach this is the reaching peak temperature you can reaching and the all at the same time at the corresponding time also you can see the corresponding time also that means to reach the peak temperature it takes some the huge time and depends on the relaxation time. So it means that correct choice of the relaxation time is one important thing when you try to develop the heat conduction model and it is very specific in case of the dual phase lag model because in this cases we are handling the two relaxation time one is the relaxation time due to the heat flux another is the relaxation time for the temperature development within this body. Similarly we can see the effect of the relaxation time in other way also that means temperature profile for the same magnitude of the relaxation time. So same magnitude of the relaxation time in the tau they both are the same magnitude 0 0.1 picosecond similarly is this is other uh, is the 0 0.2 picosecond 1 picosecond 10 picosecond three or the different cases we have tried with this thing and then we can find out the temperature ratio 
with the ratio of the uh, we can see for temperature ratio it is varying from 0 0.6 to 1.4 but if you look into the temperature profile for the lower value of the relaxation type it is a very low value of the relax 0 0.1 it is quickly try to establish the equilibrium condition and try to reach some constant value of the temperature uh, but this variability increases if the uh, ratio or the value of the relaxation times is actually increases that means the relaxation time is increasing these things the variability temperature is actually in, in increases if you see the very high value uh, this takes some more variability is this, this touches with the relaxation then it try to reach the equilibrium and in case of the one both are one then each reach the equilibrium then it try to reach the equilibrium condition so it means that variability increases with increase the value of the relaxation time as that we can observe this data we observe we obtain from the numerical model uh, that means uh, from the what we have developed uh, for the analysis of the non free heat conduction. So, we can see this kind of conclusion that relaxation parameter has to be uh, chosen is very carefully because experimental is very difficult to measure the relaxation parameter uh, for a particular uh, system. So, sometimes we depend on this uh, analysis or that means to depend on this uh, uh, or we can estimate from the other by uh, from other way in the sense that from the by relating to the other parameters we can estimate the relaxation time but it is very much sensitive to the model results we can see the variation in the depth of the heat affected zone from this we have done some simulation we can see that how the depth of zone depth of uh, uh, heat affected zone is increasing so it's a 100 femtosecond this profile we reach the 100 femtosecond this we reach 50 femtosecond but if you see 150 femtosecond even it is more than that depth of penetration is more than that although the stop supplying the uh, pulse energy at this point after 100 femtosecond this is 100 femtosecond so 150 this is 200 and this is 300 second femtosecond this is 500 700 and then uh, 1000 femtosecond it means that if you see with respect to time the heat affected zone is actually increases and that is the typical nature of the heat affected zone in case of the ultra short pulse laser heating of a nano film. So, here you can be very clear the minimum maximum depth. So, heat affected zone we can use the in this case maximum depth of heat affected zone is a continuously increasing if you see there is the increasing order. Although pulse up to pulse energy stopped at this point the within first 100 seconds the all pulse energy has been stopped but still there is a heat affected zone is gradually increasing and that increases because of the thermal inertia effect this we have we have tried to show that nanofilm the time temp uh, heating but the time temperature profile for the different relaxation time we can see for the different relaxation time how the temperature profile actually varies uh, we see that uh, solid line so 1 2 5 and 10 this is the ratio of the relaxation time and dotted line also this is also represent the ratio of the relaxation time and uh, peak temperature estimated for uh, tau t equal to 0 0.1 picosecond and this 0 0.1 picosecond we see there is a peak temperature is basically achieving this in this way the peak temperature is gradually decreasing and it is achieved uh, gradually decreasing and the ratio is very high then the peak temperature is the maximum when the ratio decreases then peak temperature is actually decreases and other way also same thing also happened in case of this in case of the other ratio that means uh, for 0 0.0 tau relaxation due to 0 0.05 picosecond here also you can see the peak temperature is actually decreasing and this thing and temperature profile are different so it means that the relaxation time is very much sensitive to the to obtain the uh, this thing temperature profile and it has to be very uh, carefully determine the value of the uh, relaxation time and optimized value of the relaxation time is required or optimization of the relaxation time is required to get the very good results of temperature distribution when you apply the non Fourier based heat dual phase lag heat conduction model. Now we try to look into the theoretical development of the heat transfer model in case of the oiling process. So in case of the oiling process is not much different as compared to the, the simply heating this thing only in terms of the heat source term we can in case of welding it is sometimes it is necessary to introduce the heat source from the volumetric heat source term so that has to be incorporated but when you try to analyze the nano film in that cases we represent the heat flux in the surface heat flux so in that way it is different whether we are in considering only the surface heat flux or whether we are considering the internal heat generation term what we have observed that in the uh, Fourier heat conduction model there is internal heat generation term now if this if we consider the 
uh, internal heat generation term in case of the non photoelectric heat conduction model the expression can be different and that internal heat generation term may be significant when you try to analyze develop the model in case of the welding process when you are using the some kind of the ultrasound pulse laser source. Now first order expansion we have already seen that first order expansion of the non photoelectric heat conduction with internal heat generation term incorporating this thing the dual phase lag model can be represented like this. So this term we have already seen and then since that we are using this uh, q dot term so internal heat generation term so this extra term will be there in the in the Fourier heat conduction dual phase lag Fourier heat conduction model considering the effect of the internal heat generation term but alpha is the thermal diffusivity k is thermal conductivity that is there the volumetric heat flux is uh, reasonable to assume that it is applied externally within the system uh, without any time lag and the rate of internal heat generation is constant. So, q dot term is the rate of internal heat generation we represent this thing the per unit volume per unit time. So, therefore, further variation of the rate of internal heat if we con it is not a uh, feasible um, that means variation of this uh, with respect to time we take we neglect this term it is a var variation is basically equal to 0 that means we are considering the further variation of the internal heat generation term with respect to time uh, can be neglected and this heat generation term is not accounting any kind of the temperature lag. So, from that point of view we can reach this kind of expression that is an equation d1. Now, the last term of the d equation therefore, you neglecting this value so last term can be 0. So, then we reach this expression in case of the when you are considering the uh, internal heat generation term. So, now we will be solving the same way what we have done the formulation in case of the simply assuming the heat flux on the surface the same way we can uh, do the formulation in this particular case. But theoretical development of the heat transfer model in case of the welding what uh, we can represent that internal heat generation term. So, that quadruple double ellipsoidal heat source model we have already discussed in the um, particular module I think module 2 and then uh, module 2 or module 3 and then after that what we have shown that how this uh, distribution what we can develop some volumetric heat generation term that means heat source model basically volumetric heat source model. So, in, in that case we have shown that double elicitly heat source model every any heat source model there are two terms are imp, uh, was important that one is the, the geometric uh, shape. Uh, geometric shape what, what kind of the regular geometric shape we can use and second how the energy is distributed with is the geometric shape. So, that in the similar direction in case of dissimilar material is the most nonlinear. So, some modification of the double ellipsoidal heat source model was the quadruple ellipsoidal heat source model. In this case, uh, what we can incorporate this volumetric heat source uh, term that we use the ellipsoid, the part of the four ellipsed ellipsoid can be merged and then we can make the quadruple ellipsoidal heat source model and then expression is already explained in that module. But if you want to do the heat source model for the uh, dissimilar material and along with the moving so, uh, along with the moving heat source. So, both can bring the non-symmetric in the energy distribution and that is why there are four different kind of the A1 and uh, this 1, 2, 3, 4 ellipsoids can be considered part of the ellipsoids can be considered merge it then quadruple ellipsoidal heat source can be modeled. Now, you can see the characteristic of this quadruple ellipsoidal heat source model is that double, double ellipsoidal heat source model is accounts only the uh, moving heat source only. But double ellipsoidal model is extended to the quadruple model heat source model to account non symmetry energy distribution for the dissimilar material as well as the accounting the linear velocity in particular direction. Therefore, consists of the four parts of the ellipsoids, but depth of penetration remains the same. So, the depth of penetration remains the same. So, this profile can be merged in such a way and maintain the C1 continuity. With this assumptions, it is possible to develop the quadruple ellipsoidal heat source model and that may be very much relevant to represent the volumetric heat source in case of the welding process and this heat source model is basically same whether it is Fourier heat conduction model or whether it is non Fourier heat conduction model. But I am showing you some variation of the uh, volumetric heat source model. So, in this case we can see the variation may happen because the geometric shape is the one fact and the other fact is the what way the energy is distributed within this particular geometric shape. So, in this case if we assume that it is a exponentially that we normally follow in case of the double ellipsoid heat source model that is the exponentially varying the one distribution axis in along the x axis y axis, but along the z axis the some parabolic kind of heat distribution may happen. So, in this cases we assume the 1 minus c by z square. So, this is the variation 
uh, that means intensity varies with respect to this thing. In that case, if we follow what uh, we can derive the any kind of the heat source model, uh, same methodology if we follow, then we can find out what is the maximum heat intensity at the center, then we can find out the QM which expression is different from the double ellipsoidal heat source, ellipsoidal heat source model. So, Q is the power supplied or pulse energy divided by pulse on time then expression is different and then in this case is the ABC distribution parameter can be different A approximated B approximated by C is deterministic value 1 by C square but we can see that distribution for example 1 minus Z square by C square distribution may happen in this way also. So, this is the expression for the this distribution but other expression it can the exponential way it is very slight this way. So, it means that that even if we follow the geometric shape and the regular geometric shape what way the distribution can be different and accordingly a distribution can be different uh, energy distribution and based on that we can estimate the what is the value of maximum intensity and the similar methodology can be applied for the heat source model. So, maximum intensity is reduced 1.3 times with respect to the ellipsoidal or double ellipsoidal heat source model and because this expression is different in case of the double ellipsoidal heat source model. So, in that cases this expression is 1.3 times. So, maximum intensity is 1.3 times with respect to the ellipsoidal or double heat source model. Now, we can show that simulation uh, some results for the double uh, in non polar heat conduction model uh, applicable in case of the welding uh, process and that is the dissimilar welding process. We have done some simulation. So, welding of the dissimilar material is the steel and aluminum alloy. So, steel and aluminum alloy uh, first create the domain the finite element uh, this domain discretization of the domain using the some you can use the uniform mesh system or some adaptive mesh system can be done but in this cases we have used the uniform mesh system and the welding velocity is this along this direction the heat source moves particular direction. Then we can get the typical temperature profile is something like that we can see that dissimilar material that means the heat uh, properties are completely different from the steel and aluminum specifically the heat conductivity are different specific heat are also different and at the same time heat source is moving on particular direction then we can get that this non-symmetric uh, profile. Um, this thing. So, same, some part will be if we see the maximum heat is concentrated towards the steel side and the uh, aluminum side the that maximum uh, that temperature is less as compared to the uh, as compared to the steel part. Now, you see this kind of temperature profile we can expect in case of the dissimilar material, but if you look into the other aspect that means how the maximum temperature varies on a particular in maybe we can stick any either steel or aluminum the typical nature of the temperature variation with respect to the oil time. So, uh, at the different frequency you can see or pulse repetition rate we can start the pulse repetition in 1 megahertz 0 0.1 0 0.5 and 1.5 megahertz. We can see all this pulse repetition rate that how the temperature profile varies red red color means the minimum pulse frequency pulse repetition rate we can get the temperature distribution that domain is rich the temperature is very high as compared to the other frequency if you follow this thing. But in this case pulse width that means um, 750 femtosecond laser the pulse width is 750 femtosecond velocity is very small 1 millimeter per second. So, there is a possibility of the pulse overlapping and the average power is 30 watt. So, average power is 30 watt in the sense uh, in, in this case the frequency frequency are different to maintain the average power then peak power and the pulse energy can be different. But average power is same for all these 4 cases. But pulse repetition rate are completely different for all these cases. So, if you see that the temperature domain can reach on the single application of the single pulse is the very high temperature as compared to the, the low frequencies for the high frequency in this case. So, it means that increment of the pulse frequency is basically uh, that indicates that it moves from ablation to the welding, welding mode. It means that the very low frequency pulse specific to ultrasound pulses that is more suitable in case of the ablation process. But if you reduce the pulse frequency is the pulse frequency is low then is very small pulse frequency then it is more uh, towards the most suitable in case of the welding process. We will see why it is suitable in the welding process. So, ablation threshold limit is decided by the pulse energy definitely in, the, in this case the pulse energy can be high in case of the high pulse repetition rate once it, when it uh, maintains the average power is the same. Because accumulation of the heat confined into the small area at the low frequency. So, heat accumulation is there at the low frequency and that is why there is a once the heat accumulation there is an increment of the temperature gradually but not too high or not too much on the application of the single pulse. So, over the successive pulses then heat accumulation is there and gradually increment of the temperature. So, that 
way it is more suitable in case of the welding uh, that means melting of the material and the joining. But if the pulse energy is very high and then with a short period of time this pulse energy is applied to this thing it can immediately uh, that means without reaching the equilibrium there is the very high temperature and the evaporate the material uh, that is why it is very much suitable that means low pulse frequency part is very much suitable in case of the uh, material ablation process. But heat distribution is restricted by the relaxation of the heat transfer for femtosecond level pulse that is uh, obvious that is obvious but heat dissipation is ex, uh, restricted by the relaxation of the heat because relaxation of the heat is basically restrict the heat dissipation. So, once it restrict the heat dissipation then that is why it is more suitable the ultra short pulse in case of the material ablation process until and unless we control the uh, parameter in such a way that lowering the pulse energy as well as the increasing the pulse frequency that is more suitable towards the uh, welding of the material. We can see that uh, simulation we have compared the three different uh, in this case is the three different pulse frequency and three different pulse energy and what is the uh, accordingly what we can simulate the temperature profile using the ultrasound pulse laser. The first figure if we see this first figure uh, this is 100 kilohertz that means very low pulse frequency and the pulse energy is 300 microjoule. So, definitely in this case we can see the mode of the ablated region we can observe that means it is a quickly vaporization of the materials happens ablated region that is why similar kind of uh, prediction is possible using this non Fourier heat conduction model and we can see this aluminum site and the uh, stainless steel site. So, if you see the aluminum site the uh, heat diffusion or heat effector zone is more or heat diffusion zone is more but still there is not much heat diffusion zone and because the um, steel is having the thermal conductivity is very low uh, as compared to the aluminum. Aluminum is ha having very high thermal conductivity. So, that is why heat diffusion zone or heat effector zone is maybe more towards the aluminum side, but in not at that much of heat diffusion or heat effector zone in case of the stainless steel side. Now, if you compare the pulse frequency first case to second case, second case if you see that increment of the pulse frequency 1 megahertz and but pulse energy is only 30 microjoule which is 10 times less than that of the first one. In this case the ablated region is less uh, rather the molten zone is well, molten zone is more in this case is stable. So, that means if we gradually increasing the pulse frequency at the same time decreasing the pulse energy even for ultra short pulse laser then it is possible to achieve the mode of the welding. Even if we reach the high pulse frequency 1.5 megahertz but pulse energy is only 20 microjoule which is less than that of few that means uh, pulse frequency is increasing and pulse energy is decreasing and of course all these cases we maintain the same average pulse power that is 30 watt but till you see the ablated region is basically decreasing and the molten zone is actually increasing. So, in that sense we can say that even if we increase the pulse uh, lowering the pulse energy as at the same time uh, there is an increment of the pulse frequency then it promotes the accumulation of the heat energy and that actually try to uh, try to increase the temperature uh, gradually and most suitable in case of the welding process. So, therefore, low pulse frequency or high pulse energy is favorable for the ablation of materials increasing of the pulse repetition rate and decreasing in pulse energy which is favorable condition for welding overall heat effector zone is limited and the material experiences the heat effector zone is very limited we can see from this analysis the heat effector zone is very maybe little bit more in case of aluminum side but stainless steel heat effector zone is very small. But overall heat effector zone is limited even if you use the ultra short pulse and the material experiences the very rapid melting and the solidification and that is that normally happens very confined zone that is very small zone. This may help to suppress the thermally induced distortion, stress, cracks due to the localized melting and welding process. At the same time even if the dissimilar material this is also advantageous because in this case is very rapid solidification that it can reduce the intermetallic formation as well also in that way it helps. So, therefore, in this case the dissimilar materials can be uh, using the ultra short pulse laser and of course, if you see that in this case a dissimilar material is only 0.5 millimeter thickness sheet. So, very small thickness sheet it is possible to achieve, but practically if you want to achieve this welding of this only 0.5 millimeter using the ultra short pulse laser then it is necessary to some geometric groove is required otherwise the ultra short pulse laser may not be able to penetrate uh, to the throughout this thickness direction. 
we can explain that what uh, you can uh, this thing there, there is a if you see the temperature single pulse what is the temperature distribution in case of the single pulse we can see the temperature increasing and this at a particular point at uh, the uh, peak temperature although the cycle time is 2 into 10 to the 6 picosecond but only pulse energy is applied only for the 750 femtosecond within that range we can say remaining term we can say that is the pulse of time but till even at the the pulse of time but till uh, there is a high time to reach equilibrium the peak temperature that is very much obvious and this is a typical temperature profile for the multiple pulses consequently multiple pulses in this case you see there is a uh, increment of the uh, with the application of the pulse energy there is a rapid increment of the uh, temperature but gradually it is decreasing uh, this thing that but decreasing temperature is the basically the gap between the application of the next pulse so this way with the multiple pulse there is a this way there is a fluctuating fluctuation of the temperature it is the very high value then gradually decreasing to the lowering the value it depends on the what is the lowering the value depending upon the what is the gap between the application of the next pulse therefore you can see considerable delay almost 100 nanosecond in reaching the peak temperature after end of the pulse on time that is very optimal even in this case 750 femtosecond and due to the effect of the thermal insulation that means it reach even after the peak temperature is even after the application of the pulse duration pulse energy then that happens due to the effect of the thermal inertia effect so cooling phase exists between the two pulses that is obvious and that because during the time between the application of the next between the two pulses there is a cooling may happen and there is a lowering of the temperature now maximum temperature differences we can see the 100 kelvin that means in the successive pulses it depends on the pulse frequency that means that's where we can take the advantage of these things that exactly what may be the gap between the maximum minimum value and during the application of the one pulse to next pulse that entirely depends on the what are the frequencies normally following so therefore maximum temperature difference in this case is the 100 180 kelvin and in successive pulses and entirely depends on the what are the pulse frequency is normally using so if the pulse frequency is very high then this the gap between the temper maximum temperature difference can be reduced but when there is a continuous fluctuation of the temperature increasing and then decreasing within the material subjected to uh, this uh, with the application of the ultrasound pulse this may induce lead to the thermal fatigue so that may be the different issue associated with the one issue associated with the ultrasound pulse laser processing here you can see the temperature distribution at the uh, different pulses we can see that we have uh, although the application we just individually uh, estimating the with the, some references value that what is the what is the effect of the individual pulse how the first pulse profile is something different and what is the 16 pulse and 21 pulse so all these cases temperature profile are different and this can be explained like this thing temperature profile are not ex exactly identical for all the pulses therefore cooling phase decreases in the successive pulses that means in the cooling phase decreases definitely uh, uh, in the successive pulses because there is maybe some accumulation of the pulses so every pulse starts from the different initial temperature that is fine but we just scaling it starts from the zero to make compare what is the temperature distribution associated with the individual pulses so therefore definitely the temperature effects are temperature distribution different in this case therefore differential effect of the thermal inertia is obvious because all all pulses are not behave uh, in the form of a temperature distribution identical so that means thermal inertia effect are different in all all these different different pulses temperature differences in a pulse it can be around 35 kelvin to 40 kelvin normally observed therefore continuous increment of the pink temperature over time uh, due to the combined effect of the welding spin and pulse frequency so it means that pulse frequency is there but at the same time the welding speed is an important parameter so if welding speed is very small in these cases so there is a chances of the overlapping of the pulses but if welding speed is very high then maybe overlapping gap between these two pulses or temperature distribution can be different so therefore optimum combination may lead to the steady state temperature it means that combining the uh, linear speed and the pulse frequency they may reach uh, to some steady state temperature distribution that means towards the reaching towards the identical temperature distribution so individual pulses we can observe that influence of the different parameters that we have already explained this what are the effect of the in case of the simply heating on a nano film but in case in this particular cases we can uh, estimate the what are the effect of the different relaxation parameters and that we can see the uh, for pulse repetition one megahertz and the cycle time one microsecond for this particular phases pulse with the 750 femtosecond we can see the what is the value of the time to reach peak temperature 
uh, it peak temperature 587 Kelvin in the 549 Kelvin that means 1 and 2 effect of the uh, rel relaxation type the in this case relaxation type due to heat flux other cases relaxation type due to the uh, temperature gradient. And of course, you have shown the effect of the pulse width definitely if pulse width is more then uh, it is possible to reach uh, to a high temperature or maybe temperature profile can be different. It means that peak temperature reaches at nanosecond 9 nanosecond even up the 750 femtosecond pulse is applied that kind of version we can see and of course, we represent the thermal inertia effect is more if time lag is more to reach the peak temperature then we can say the thermal inertia effect is more. But the its effects can be nullified when the pulse duration is the above the microsecond. It means that that we are getting the thermal inertia effect, but thermal inertia effect can be reduced if the pulse duration is comparable with respect to the relaxation time. That means pulse duration in the, of the order of microsecond or millisecond, then we cannot observe this kind of the thermal inertia effect in case of the pulse laser processing or pulse laser welding. Now, thermal inertia phenomena occurs over the nanosecond in this particular in investigation. We can see its, its thermal inertia effect is there, but it depends on the other parameter also. But we, in this particular case, the thermal inertia effects with the few nanoseconds only. But the thermal inertia is affected by the proper choice of the relaxation parameters. So definitely, the relaxation time is important that actually decide or that play the role. What are the thermal inertia effect can be, uh, can be um, observed in a particular system. So, therefore, from this uh, analysis we can say that tau uh, that means relaxation time due to the heat flux is more sensible parameter to the thermal inertia effect and that we can obvious we can see from here also that it is the high, very high temperature it can achieve depending upon the this thing but of course it depends on the what are the with respect to what other parameters is considered so therefore proper choice of the relaxation parameters is one of the key issue for the reliability of the model. So, reliability of the model entirely depends on the proper choice of the relaxation parameters. Even we can see the transient growth of the oil pool uh, in a welding process, we can see we can get some observation also and the oil pool at 1.5 megahertz, we see the welding speed is very low in this cases only 1 millimeter per second. So, there is a possibility large amount of the pulse accumulation or pulse energy overlaps over a fixed space. So, therefore, uh, but in this cases pulse energy is uh, also also less only 20 microjoule and heat accumulation heat accumulates to enlarge because in this cases the pulse frequency is very high. So, heat accumulation happens to enlarge the melting pool without much variability between the maximum minimum temperature uh, in this particular cases and it is actually provides the favorable condition for the welding process. We can see uh, this four different cases. and. Uh, that what are the uh, uh, in this case we can see that um, that there is a gradual development a b c d gradual development of the um, molten zone in case of the uh, in uh, dissimilar welding process at this thing and this shows the transient growth of the um, oil pool and the particular uh, pulse frequency. Mm -hmm.